Um, so before we get started, I feel like I have to say something about the fact that we have reached Sprint 100 because it sort of feels like a kind of birthday for Folio in a way. Um, so if you think about it, 100 sprints is about 200 weeks, which is almost four years. Um, and it's a big deal. We've come a long way in four years. Um, I was around in the early days, so I remember. We had um, just one team, essentially. It was core functional and core platform together in one team. Um, just a few POs, Charlotte, Holly, and me. <clears throat> um, we really just had the, the platform. I mean, we had Okapi, we had Stripes, but no end-to-end -end functionality, no user-facing functionality. So that was really the focus for our first sprints way back when um, was developing end-to-end, -end, um, you know, really basic end-to-end -end functionality, which we called the thin thread. And we still talk about the thin thread when we're developing new stuff, but most of those threads are pretty thick now. Um, we have a really robust system that's actually running several libraries around the world. Um, we, um, you know, that that one team um, is now, I mean, we've got almost 20 teams, depending on how you look at it. Um, We've got 15 to 20 POs. Um, we have scrum masters and release managers and test managers and deployment managers. I mean, there's just been so much that's happened. And um, I, for one, am just super proud to be a part of this project and just wanted to sort of acknowledge that Sprint 100. I wish I had a slideshow or we could have a party in person, but um, I think that's, that's all I had to say. So happy kind of birthday, Folio. All right, so um, as usual, we've got the team slides and we do have some new team members on the project. So I just wanted to welcome them. Uh, if I can find them here. Oh, wait, I missed one. Um, Andre, let me move this here. So on Core Functional, um, we have Andre Shapovalov. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Um, Andre, welcome to Core Functional. We're happy to have you. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, I'm having trouble advancing here. There we go. Um, I'm pretty sure we had some new folks on Vega. So let's see. Uh, uh, oh, Vega. Yes, so we've got Ilya has joined Vega. So that's exciting. And then um, on Thor, um, Nils Eric, actually new to Thor maybe, but not new to Folio, that's for sure. And um, Mike, I guess Mike Garrell is um, also acting as PO. So very cool. I think those were all the new folks I wanted to introduce, um, which means that, um, uh, Jakob, did you have anything you wanted to say about release timelines? No, not, not necessarily. I think they're all known and uh, they, they've been published and mentioned here for a couple of times. So that's, yeah, I think we can skip that. Okay. All right, then. Um, as per usual, all of the teams have a um, summary of what they've been working on here in the deck. Um, but we're going to jump right into the demos. So let's see who do we have first. It might be actually a short meeting today because um, the past couple of sprints have been very focused on um, release releases and bug fixes. So I'm not sure how much new functionality we'll have to show, but um, let's see. So it looks like Scambit's up first with Christina. I will stop sharing so you can share, Christina. Yes. Did anybody not present in yeah. mute? I think we've got a couple of folks that maybe have some background noise. Not Christina, not SDG. Yeah. Okay. Can you listen to me? Yes. yes. I can hear you and we can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, we can share with you 
the new features for for the authorities. Uh, for example, the, the searching, as you know, we have a, a change of the design of uh, the the search panel to 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 be similar uh, to to the to the to inventory. Uh, as you can see, we can. Um, select the, the, the indexes uh, for authorities, for searching authorities. Um. Okay. Okay, Christina, we lost you. Are you there? Oh, sorry. Yes. So we lost your screen share, but we can hear you all right now. And headings. Could you reshare your screen, Christina? Or SD2, maybe you could share your points. Okay. Uh, search, you can search, you can browse. Uh, Christina, we can't actually see your screen. You need to reshare. Okay. okay. Sorry, I have uh, uh, problems with my internet connection. Sorry. So, you can search for for bibliographic records using uh, the the access points, the entries, and uh, some of them are uh, headings and some of them are authorities. Okay, authorities that um, have uh, related bibliographic records have his red points, and the authorities in uh, without bibliographic record uh, have uh, have not a point. Okay, and you can see the authority from here. Okay, from the bibliographic search using the browsing and the associated uh, bibliographic records. Okay, and uh, you can Christ go Christina, are you? Um, yes. Can you please share your screen again? For some reason, we don't see it anymore. Okay. Okay. Or if your internet's not stable, maybe SD two could share hers, and you could describe. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay. Now we see it. Okay. We see it. So, okay. Uh, internet connection, sorry. Okay, well, uh, I will repeat. I am going to repeat. Uh, if you go to the bibliographic search, you will search for for um, uh, bibliographic records, but using the um, access points. Okay. So, if you browse, if you will retrieve uh, both uh, headings. Uh, this is the the, the entries, the access points, and uh, authorities uh, and authority records. Okay, authorities that are uh, you, uh, are in bibliographic records are uh, with uh, a red point. Okay, here and uh, uh, blank authorities or authorities without re uh, related bibliographic records are uh, without the point. Okay, if you go from here. To, to the authority record, okay, you can see the authority record related to the bibliographic record, okay, this is the bibliographic record, okay, but you can uh, use the authority search for searching only authorities, not uh, headings, so if you go to the, to the name, to the name index, you can use uh, the, the uh, contains, for example, operator, uh, we can Search for Mesquida. This is the the the, um, the record we can we can see now because we load uh, from a JSON file. Okay, and uh, you can see this uh, record here. You can use uh, this uh, feature for for moving the 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 view, and uh, you can uh, create new authority record from here. 
and you can uh, edit the, the, the record. At this moment, uh, the edition uh, in the mod, uh, module is not uh, in, in the snapshot, but we are working working on, on it. Okay, you can also delete the, the authority record. And, uh, okay, we have uh, uh, new buttons um, according the look and feel of the inventory module. Okay, more or less, this is what uh, we have. Yay, it's looking good, Christina. It's great to see a demo. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, it's all from our hey. one. Thank you, Christina. Looks good. Okay. Okay, so um, next up for presentations is Thunderjet um, with Alexi. Okay, hi guys, uh, let me share my screen. I hope you can see it. So I'm going to show you several features. Uh, first of uh, it is a uh, substring searching. Uh, previously we had search on orders and order lines like uh, begins with. So if a user wants to search uh, something by push order line number or push order number, he have to know it's how it starts. And uh, if uh, uh, used, uh, if someone used a prefix, so it will not be found. Uh, so now we have substring search and we can uh, like enter some something in the middle and it will Google for it. So you have, uh, have to know only the thing you want to uh, search. The same works for uh, suffix uh, and uh, actually for uh, keyword search as well because keyword contains all other um, search indexes. Uh, so that's first uh, first feature. Uh, it's uh, right now on before orders and order lines. Uh, So the next thing is uh, uh, push through the line. Uh, I've created contains funds, uh, fund distribution uh, through oh, I'm on uh, different funds, uh, African history and uh, Oceania history. Uh, but actually uh, it's, um, funds, uh, there are funds from different ledgers. One of it, uh, Oceania, is from main library and uh, uh, African history from one time uh, ledger. So, uh, previously, there were no possibility to pay such things, um, but uh, now I've created uh, that push sort of line uh, I've created, uh, I've opened the order, created invoice containing uh, that thing inside and uh, paid this, that invoice. So uh, if we go to invoices app, uh, yeah, it's it's paid for our order uh, push to the line. And we can go to the finance app uh, to particular ledgers like main library. It contains uh, uh, our ocean history and our transaction 3550. And uh, another one uh, is one time, it will contain our African history is our uh, number. Uh, another thing, uh, uh, the third feature, uh, we continue to work on expense classes. Now we implemented uh, expense classes 
statistics or data for groups of you. So here, uh, apart from funds assigned to that group, we have expense classes according and uh, uh, appropriate expense classes. Uh, so I've created a preset line with uh, that particular uh, expense classes, automoto and electronic. Mm, so we can uh, look at the data data here. Um, basically, uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you. That's great, Alexi. Thanks very much. Thanks, Alexi. It looks great. Okay, so um, Rasmus is up next for Stripes Force. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me just show my screen here. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So uh, I just want to do a, a quick demo of the updated error states. So uh, before, when a Folio application crashed due to some error, you would get an error message that looks something like this. And um, this provides some, some, some information that could be useful for developers to be able to fix the issue. Uh, but it could also look a bit scary for the average user, and it does not provide a way to escape this error. So often, a page refresh would not solve anything, so you would have to go to, for example, the module homepage by changing the URL or hitting the back button a few times, and then refresh the page to get back to a working state. We updated the error message to look a little less scary and added a, an escape route uh, with the click of a button. So. I simulated an error in the users module so we can show you uh, how the, the new uh, error message looks like. So as you can see here, um, we have a much simpler looking error message that hides all of the technical uh, information at the first glance. And if you need to provide some additional information when you report the error, you can click on uh, view error details and it will reveal the error and the stack trace. And it even gives you uh, an easy way to copy the error here. Um, so when you click on this copy and you paste it here, uh, you'll have the URL for the uh, page that the error occurs on. You have the error and then you'll have the stack trace. So this is uh, useful information that you can then pass back to, to developers or put into a Jira ticket. So when you click on the big uh, return button here, you get uh, sent back to a working state. So when I click here, I get sent back to the uh, user's homepage. And the, uh, the escape route will either be the homepage of the current module uh, or the root settings page for the module if it's a settings page. And if the escape route is the actual issue or it contains the bug, it will send you back to the Folio app homepage. So, um, the error boundary is a component It's actually a part of Stripe's components and it can be pulled into to any module uh, to enable catching errors on a lower level and it provides some and, and then you can provide some more suitable uh, custom escape routes for the user. So we definitely recommend that module developers apply these error boundaries on different levels of their module to give the user a less scary uh, error experience if they should experience uh, fatal errors. And uh, yeah, lastly, uh, when the error happens in development, you will just get the error message directly here. So you get the, the information you need. Um, so yeah, while I hope, of course, uh, very few users actually will encounter this updated error design and UX, I hope that the ones that do will have a little less frustrating experience. That's all for me. Thanks. Uh, hey, Rasmus, great job. I, I do have a question. Uh, is there anything that any of the app teams need to do uh, in support of this new error messaging UI? Um, so uh, th these changes are added to, to Stripe's core. So these will automatically be applied to all of the uh, different uh, modules. But uh, if they want to provide like lower level error messages so that let's say only the pain crashes uh, when something you know occurs they can they can use this uh, error on a, on a lower level so so it will catch the error before these top level error boundaries 
and um, in this error boundary component, we provide some props that you can pass to 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 give the user, um, you know, uh, different ways to to escape the error or a callback that will you know send them back to another page or or, or do something to to get them out of the of the of get them out of trouble. Thank you. No problem. Looks great. Thank you, Rasmus. Uh, okay, so um, Firebird is next with Steph. Hi there. Uh, so Firebird has been working hard on getting all of this funky, um, wow, I'm combining words there, all of the functionality up and running for the circulation log. And today, um, Vlad will be showing us what uh, some of the request filters look like. Um, did I leave anything out, Vlad? Nope. All right, take it away. Okay, hi everyone. Let me share my screen. Yeah, I hope you can see it. Okay, uh, to show uh, request in our suppression logs, we need to create a new request. Let's uh, do it. Okay. Oh. Another one. Okay. And now in circulation log, we can uh, see that. Uh, our request has been created just now. And now uh, we can uh, try to do some actions with it. For example, uh, change a backup service point and save it. And uh, we can, for example, uh, reorder. Yeah. And let's try to cancel our request. And after that, in the circulation log, uh, we can see that our requests have been uh, reordered, also edited before it, and canceled. Actually, uh, that's it for my demo. Thank you. That is very cool. Thank you for showing that. It's really exciting. Um, okay, then, um, Foley Jet, Anne Marie. Okay, um, before the guys show you a couple of things, I just wanted to um, uh, uh, make happy noises about a few things. Um, like Kate said, for most of the teams and, and definitely for us, we've been doing tons of bug fixes in the last two sprints. So we've done 48 bug fixes. Um, and a big shout out for, um, work that doesn't always um, show in sprint demos, but is super important. On the UI side, um, Igor Koba is kind of our accessibility uh, uh, expert, and he has um, almost finished wiping out our accessibility debt. Um, so far, he has analyzed and updated 28 screens and components in our area. And then Ivan Krijanovsky and Maria Oloshina, um, have been working on swapping out some of our local components for shared ones from the data transfer components repository that data import and data export both use. And so, so far they've swapped out 12 components there. Backend side, um, in addition to all the bug fixes and the continued strengthening of the backend infrastructure, these past two sprints, they've done a bunch of analysis and working with DevOps people at EBSCO and at Index Data to sort out configuration problems and permission problems and source record data issues for live libraries and for Bugfest. And so all of that's been incredibly helpful and doesn't always show in the JIRAs. All right, and so after that, I wanna turn us over to Alexi. Um, we're just showing a few little bug fixes today. 
Yeah, hello everyone. So let me share my screen. Okay, do you see it? Yes. Okay, so uh, we made uh, several enhancement enhancements for our uh, data import functionality. And uh, uh, first of all, I want to show um, uh, how we can um, stop uh, um, loading of big, uh, um, let's say, files and processing of big files. Uh, and uh, this functionality also can be applicable for a stacked or error uh, jobs in progress. So let me upload a file and start uh, processing a job with uh, importing a source records. And uh, we can uh, click uh, a trash cannon. And after 10 seconds, uh, it uh, should cancel uh, a running or stacked uh, job from running area. And uh, it, uh, it will be moved to uh, a regular log area with uh, status completed with errors, because not all records are processed. And, and we cancel it. And also, um, we can uh, undo this operation if we uh, misclick uh, and click a trash cannon, a trash uh, icon, uh, uh, and we want to uh, undo this operation. So. It's dropping out. And uh, I think uh, uh, that's it for this part. And also we um, make some uh, improvements for our uh, matching uh, uh, mechanism in uh, profiles. Uh, so for now we support a pretty complex uh, structure of matching. Um, uh, let, let me describe uh, one case. Uh, so uh, in this uh, job profile, uh, we uh, want to uh, find an, uh, an instance by human readable ID. And uh, then um, we want to um, make a submatch for uh, related holdings and find exactly one holding by permanent uh, location ID. Uh, so it, 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 this uh, match profile you know, looks like uh, we have um, incoming records like static value and existing records as holding. Uh, here we want to find a holding with a permanent location that um, starts um, with uh, this text. In, in this case, it will be online. And I uh, prepared um, uh, prepared um, an instance with holding, uh, and in this uh, holding we have some values that not change it. And permanent location ID is online, uh, so uh, I prepared a one uh, mark record that uh, oh my God. It looks like something. Oh no. Someone killed Folio. All right, half an hour ago it worked. Yeah, 
something went wrong on Polar M. All right, it definitely worked an hour ago. It, it's just shy now that we're in a demo. Yeah, so in this uh, case, when we upload uh, this file, we should uh, change only uh, um, uh, a holding with and change some values for this holding. But uh, for now, we can support uh, uh, such kind of uh, complex matching with uh, different entities and uh, submatches for for it. And I believe uh, Ruslan can uh, proceed with his presentation on another one and of course um, it's pr pr pretty long time to prepare such kind of profile and show it on another end. So matching is definitely some of the most um, challenging logic, I think, of the of the whole import process. It's really easy to create new stuff. It's harder to match and then update existing stuff. And um, so a lot of work, a lot of bug fixing has gone into the matching stuff. Maybe if you could uh, um, uh, show the match profile, then we can just see uh, how you, how you um, set up your match profile, and then it, it it's okay that it doesn't run on a given file. So yeah, so this first match profile, the top level, is getting us to the right instance. Yeah, so uh, we have a next sequence of uh, profiles. So our first match profile uh, contain a um, uh, matching from mark beep uh, field to instance field and we choose a o1 field uh, in mark record and come in mark record and instance human um, uh, human readable id in uh, instance um, existing instance in database and um, as we see for matches yeah so if we find uh, a inventory instance with such a human readable id we uh, will process another one match profile so not action but a match profile and uh, this match profile uh, is a sub match with a usage of static value and um, as i mentioned before we uh, choose a uh, not instance, but holding, because we want to update a holding. And uh, we select a um, mm, value that we want to find in uh, permanent location ID uh, in holding uh, record. And uh, if we find this holding uh, for this instance, uh, we will perform an, uh, our mm, action profile to update uh, this holding record with selected mapping profile. So in this case, we can uh, perform a pretty uh, complex uh, searches and uh, make searches for, uh, let's say, related entities like uh, items, holdings. So we can uh, create a, um, a job profile of with uh, matching by instance and then find uh, uh, related exactly one related uh, holding or uh, a related item and I think it's uh, great. Thanks Alexi. And Ruslan. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Please let me know when you can see it. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, today I'm going to demonstrate the uh, Atlas script support in data import application. Uh, for demonstration, I'm going uh, to uh, import uh, uh, this uh, pre preliminary prepared uh, mark record uh, with the uh, script data in the uh, 880 field, 8 subfield. And uh, here in mark editor, uh, Atlam script Unicode uh, is displayed in such way. So let's import it. I'm going to use. 
use secret button and the import we can find a newly created instance by human readable ID. And here using uh, view source action, uh, we can uh, make sure that uh, uh, mark record with the Adlam script data was successfully uh, uh, processed and uh, uh, this uh, data here is represented uh, by uh, appropriate glyphs. So I believe that's it from my side. Thank you for attention. And that's one that we wanted to show. It, it had come in as a question to Peter Murray from, from uh, one of the libraries. Yale, yeah. I believe it was. Um, and thank you for demonstrating that. I think it, in order for you to uh, view this, if you try it yourself, uh, you need to have a specific font uh, loaded onto your computer. Uh, it's not, the, the glyphs are not in the default fonts that uh, uh, typically come with operating systems. Uh, but this was a, a request uh, that came from uh, Yale about supporting uh, this particular uh, set of glyphs. And this is part of the extended UTF-8 character set. So it was an important one for us to check because we, we weren't sure about that. So yep. it was a good one. Thanks, Ruslan. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Ruslan. OK, so Concord is up next with Magda. Hello, everyone. Uh, we spent last two sprint, uh, sprints working on uh, bugs, addressing the bugs, working on the POC of the functionality that we plan to work in the next releases, and uh, also um, adding uh, te test coverage and migrating UI tests from a big test to adjust. Uh, today, Elisabetta Kochlova will uh, present the changes that we made to the custom mapping profile that allow uh, including the whole SRS record. And Victor will talk about, Victor Soroka will talk about uh, um, a special case when downloading uh, UIDs takes longer than 20 seconds and we need to notify a user that we are still working on downloading. Uh, the UIDs and uh, Victor will also talk about uh, uh, the migration to uh, just of our tests. Uh, Yelzevita, are you ready? Yep. We'll be sharing the screen. I uh, hope you can see it. Um, so uh, let me start with a small feature we did, a small thing we did is. Um, when you duplicate the mapping profile, it, it will add, uh, prevent the copy of uh, demo, not copy of, uh, to the name of the original mapping profile. So you can, and you can save it uh, straight away without any changes. And uh, the other thing I want to show you is um, we added uh, source record storage uh, record type option to the folio re uh, record type. Thing, um, which is needed for the cases when the user needs to export the whole instance record and maybe append some holdings and items uh, to it. Mm. So as you can see, uh, it has some info before here to give a little bit more insight about this uh, option here. And basically, when, when selecting this option, it will automatically disable uh, inventory instance option here and on the transformation model. So you can see it, it doesn't show up here. And um, it goes vice versa. When selecting inventory instance, um, the source record storage is uh, disabled and um, uh, it instance is back on the uh, transformation transformation model, and uh, also it doesn't even now allow you to trick it. So, for example, if you try to do something like this, add an instance, and then you know switch back to search record storage, try to save it, let me give it a name. Um, even now allowed 
you to do it. So that's basically all I can, all I can show you for now because from backend work is not completed yet and hopefully we will be able to show it to you next time and Victor will pick it up from here thanks thank you Elisabetta. let me share my screen so guys uh, hello uh, today uh, I'm going to present you two features Two functionalities. So the first one is uh, the notification, uh, which we added uh, when the downloading of the list of the IDs takes more than two seconds. But firstly, let me show you the default uh, behavior when it takes less than two seconds. So in this case, when we click on downloading button, uh, we should not see any notification. And for now, let me simulate the behavior when. Uh, the endpoint for downloading the list of EODs takes longer. And for that, I am using HTTP toolkit tool. And now let me save the list of EODs. And as you can see, we see this notification. And now I can switch back to this tool and resume uh, the request. And we see that the file uh, is downloaded. And the second, uh, scene which I want to talk with you is about our progress uh, with React, uh, I mean, approach to testing uh, React application folio, which is uh, to replace big test with Jest and React testing library, which is now considered the first approach uh, in uh, folio. And uh, I want to demonstrate you the progress over data export and strip data transfer components where over uh, the last two sprints, we set up the environment for this test in both projects and wrote uh, first tests in, in them. And on this uh, page, you can see that uh, the current coverage for uh, stripes to the transfer components, which is 7%. And here we can see the coverage uh, in Jest and testing library in data, uh, data export. Uh, from now on, we write only uh, we write on only tests with Jest and React testing library and uh, fix uh, uh, tests with big tests if uh, uh, they needs to be updated. But we are not uh, writing new uh, functionality with big tests for for new for new features. And uh, we plan actually to. Uh, get rid of uh, big test uh, tests uh, once we reach 80% coverage in both projects. And for that, we have created additional tickets, which we uh, plan to uh, like migrate, move uh, big test tests, uh, and rewrite them with just and track testing library. And once we uh, reach 80% coverage in both projects, within the within uh, replace uh, coverage metrics, which is collected right now from big test on Sonar Cloud. So for now we have uh, this coverage with big test and uh, once we reach 80%, we will then uh, replace this metric with Jest and React tests in library and we will be able to uh, remove uh, big test tests at all. So that's all from my side, thank you. Thank you, Victor. Is that it for Concord? Yes. That's it. Okay, great. Victor, if you could stop sharing, then um, Darcy could take over for Vega. Hey, I don't have anything to share actually, um, but I'm going to introduce Anna's um, 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 <laughs> sorry demo. What I do want to say though is that we had like the last two sprints have been primarily focused on bug fixing and release activities, as others have actually mentioned. Um, we had very few stories. So this is one small part of a larger part of fee fine actions that um, Anna is going to demo. So go ahead, Anna. Thanks, Darcy. Hi, everyone. I'm sharing my screen. Can you see it? Yes. Um, I have the small story for demonstration related to uh, FISFINES cancellation. 
let's go to patron and create a new file. Uh, so after fine was created, uh, we can see that uh, latest payment status uh, is outstanding. In other words, no actions have been applied yet, uh, yet to current fine. And this is actually the single um, the single case when the fine can be cancelled uh, uh, by user. Uh, for example, if uh, user user created by mistake, uh, current fine, or accidentally, it can be cancelled as error. Uh, let's uh, apply action. Let's make it partial payment. So now we can see that uh, there is no um, possibility to cancel current fine anymore. So uh, if any actions, pay, waive, refund to transfer applied for fee or fine, um, it shouldn't be allowed to cancel fee fine as error. That's all I've got. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. OK. Yeah, that was quick. And I think um, Sergey is going to do a quick demo for Core Functional as well. Um, we've also been very much focused on releases and tons and tons of bug fixing. So um, yeah, over to you, Sergey. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. I hope, can you see it? Yep. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start with some small changes and improvements in users and inventory applications. Uh, first is uh, changing the order of columns in the list uh, in the list of items in the instance record. As you can see, uh, the material type column has been moved to the far right. Uh, second is uh, a new report icon uh, was added to the um, in transition items report as menu option. And uh, the same icon appeared, go to the users, and the same icons appears uh, with overdue loans report and with claim returned report. And uh, third, the option claim returned uh, report uh, was added as menu item. It works as any report item in any menu. After clicking, we get a list of claim returned items as a CSV file. Let's check uh, if we have uh, the items with uh, claim returned status. Yes, we have two. Uh, and uh, let's return to the users and uh, claim, click claim return report. Yes, we have the CSV file with two records in it. Uh, sorry, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. I don't know, is that noise on your side? No, 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 oh. it's not from my side. <laughs> All okay. right, I'll see if, see if I can mute someone. Uh, the next uh, improvements in the inventory. Inventory. And uh, in any instance, let's uh, edit this instance and drill to the title data section. After clicking the add preceding tile or add succeeding file, it doesn't matter. You can see the plus button that stands for instance lookup. And uh, after clicking, you can see the um, empty list, empty page here. Before now, by default, we got 
the list of all instances here and uh, it was not a problem for the follow snapshot environment but it can be a really challenge for the uh, university of chicago environment uh, where the number of instances is uh, several million and now we have an empty default list and uh, the instances are expected to appear after doing a search yeah or filtering for example yeah it works uh, as expected and uh, the uh, last thing in my today's demo is a new feature about uh, displaying the number of open requests uh, in pop-up when we when the item status changes uh, to missing with a drawn claim returned or declared lost i'll show you the places where this feature has implemented and demo how it works on the open loan uh, low loans page uh, in inventory uh, in inventory when we try to change the item status to missing or withdrawn it works the same way uh, let's say uh, we have an open loan for the item and this item has uh, open request on it when we try to uh, mark this item as declared lost by the way we as you, as you can know as you know uh, we can do it from different places from this uh, drop down menu from the loan details uh, you can see declared lost and claim returned and you can do it from the using the uh, bulk claim return button mm. here and uh, i i'll show you how it works from for example from here and uh, uh, when we try to uh, mark the item as declared lost you can see the message here there is one open request for this item and as you can notice this is a link a link to the request application which uh, displays the open request for this item and here we can uh, cancel the request or move this this request to another item uh let's return to the open uh, loads page and i'd like to show you on one more case when a user doesn't have a permission to view requests uh, i've already uh, created such kind of user and uh, log out log in with aaron uh, let's uh, return to the previous page uh, let's check that we are locked as a rna but this user doesn't have the permission to view request and when we try to claim return for example we see that pop-up says that there may be open requests for this item and there is no any link uh, to them so this is all i wanted to show you today thanks for your attention if you have any questions please ask thanks sergey lots of good little improvements there um okay so now we have actually a documentation update from david crossley oh, thank you Okay, um, there's, there's two things I'd like to highlight recent developments on the dev.folio.org side. Could you speak up uh, a little bit, David? You sound oh, a bit faint. sure. How's that? A bit better? Yeah, that's, that's a little better. Okay, uh, yes. Um, so two highlights today about the dev.folio.org side. Uh, this site's um, intended to assist developers for 
doing their work. Uh, now this is an, but there's also useful information for other people as well. And this source code map that I'm about to show is one of those in that it, so um, I'll just run through these dot points quickly and then I'll, I'll do a presentation of the actual map, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so previously, I, earlier in the project, I used to, every time there was a new module repository added to GitHub, I used to document it here on a source code listing. But of course, that was always unmaintainable. And now it's supremely so with almost 200 modules. So I've developed a way to automate this listing. Uh, so roughly every week, there's a process that crawls around our folio dash all GitHub space and gathers some summary information about each of the modules that it finds. Uh, and then um, there's also additional information that, that it will link into. Now, the, one of the principles of, of development is that the developers know most about their module and so they at least maintain a, a readme of their module, but some modules have additional documentation maintained with the Git repository. Uh, but then this, this uh, system will then also link into other documentation related to that module. For example, for a backend module has API documentation. And for various modules, there are certain wiki documents that are relevant. And when the new user docs application, um, the new user docs system is in operation, then this system could link into those as well. And then there's also a, a document now to help module developers um, increase the visibility of their documentation. So now I'll quickly go and, and give a quick demonstration of that. Now I'm going to use the search system here and I'm going, I know I want to find something about the course reserve module. Cool, whoops, good spell. So the, if it's two documents, oh, one thing I want to say about the search, everything, every bit of content on the developer website is in the search system. And so when this source code map is improved, and I'll talk about ways to improve it, we get more content into the system. Uh, now, something about course reserves. So we could, on this page, because it came up in the search system, we could use our browser's finding page to get to that, but also there's the navigation down the side here. There are so many modules, of course, there needs to be a way to navigate them a bit better. And so it's automatically broken up into separate sections. <coughs> Excuse me, UI courses. Now, a um, number of these bits are gathered from automatically from the, the, the crawling of the GitHub. Uh, one of those is the description of the project. Uh, there's of course the link to the readme because that's always there. Uh, this module in particular has some more documentation which the, the robot discovered. And most recently, in, in recent times, there's been some folio tips and user, user documentation and settings added to the, to the wiki. So a lot of these modules can link directly to those. Um, the other bit of courses is backend modules. So there's a backend mod courses and it has different stuff that's been discovered by the little robot. One of those being that it has RAMLs API documentation for it, which will be generated into there. Now, I'll just quickly explain how it's how this thing is assembled. So <clears throat> it's not fully automated, it, but there is a, um, a 
an infrastructure job and later on I'm hoping we will get this completely automated but for the moment I run it every week and then I commit this file back to the Folio um, dev docs generation repository and so it, it roughly has various information that it's discovered about each module um, like it knows that that's a back-end module, mod calendar. Um, it knows that this one has a RAMLs directory. And anyway, all of that is used to then generate this source code listing page. The, the extra data that um, links to the wiki, um, so this is a data file that, that um, can be maintained to add in that extra information. Uh, now I'll just go back here, um, back again. So Is David, that... linking out to the wiki documentation um, yes. that the, the users and the POs are sometimes working on, you said anybody, um, it, you just have to update that, uh, the links in that list that you just showed. That's correct, yes. Okay, because um, that's definitely always getting changes in that area. Sure, um, and I don't know a way to, to automate that, but it, at least now we've got a way to, to add them in when we know about them. Uh, so as I said, each roughly each week, we um, scour, scour the GitHub and if it detects a docs or doc directory, then that will be used. And, and various ones of those have that. Stripes core has other documentation here. So that's going straight into their doc directory. Um, oh, just, sorry, sorry, sorry for flicking around. Um, if, yeah, in that directory, if, if the, if there was a readme, a file called readme in there, like any GitHub repository, it would be shown down, down here. And so if there was a readme file in there, you could, the module could have a, a bit more of an introduction into all of these separate documents that, that are in that directory. Uh, the about section is used for, whoops, wrong one. This one here had a description, and so it's shown there. UI search did not have a description, and that comes from here. Um, so every repository, if they improved that about area, about description, then it would show up in the listing. Um, now, <clears throat> if each readme had uh, an introduction or even if it doesn't, this robot could perhaps pull out, say, the first couple of hundred characters from the readme. But so that would be useful, but it's not happening yet. Um, uh, but I do note that a lot of the repositories, especially ones generated from Stripe CLI, the UI modules, a lot of them haven't replaced the boilerplate of the initial readme. So if I did try and try and um, gather that extra information, it would make a little bit of a mess. So that's something that needs attention in some of the modules. Uh, yes, um, Amri, the additional documentation here is a simple file with a listing of each module plus a link to the relevant wiki page. For the, say the settings, these can't be linked automatically, unfortunately, because you know, there's there's not a consistent naming of the documents, especially ones like this that seem to not have um, the the user tips URL. I don't know why that happens for some wiki pages, but wikis are notoriously hard to link to. Uh, that's enough of that. So yes, so this document 
encourages the module developers to be able to improve the visibility of their documentation. Um, I'll just jump back to here. Um, mm -hmm. any, any more questions about this part? Or if not, I'll move on to the next part. Or people can contact me separately, of course. Uh, so the second part here is there's been some improvements to the API documentation. Uh, API documentation is generated every time a module makes a merge to their main branch. Then this documentation is regenerated and it's dri driven by the RAML files and JSON schemas at each of the backend repositories. Gary, uh, the, I swept and washed the, the kitchen floor because it was so uh, Yeah, sorry, I'll speak up here. Uh, the JSON schemas refer to other schemas using this dollar ref linkage system. Uh, in, in previous previous generation of the API docs, that, that was not expanded. That was, and so you, you wouldn't, weren't able to see it. And I'll just show quickly one here. Um, so for a copy, very important documentation, whoops. Um, things like this, that's all you got. So it's not very useful, but now, uh, it's much more useful in that these, these, um, these references are now expanded before generating the documentation. So now the module descriptor documentation is now complete. You're able to view all of the related schema for each module. Um, and the only other thing I want to say is that um, all of these things have a link directly to them. So anybody can link straight in to the relevant API documentation. Um, like just that. Mod courses in, in fact has even more, um, more sophisticated um, API documentation. They've added a lot of extra information into here beyond and that's all in in here in the raml file um yeah i won't go into that that's not part of the demo uh and the other quick thing here was also each individual raml file has a link so users um, departments oops links Link straight into the relevant part in the table. Um, whoops, okay, that's it for my demo. Great, thank you, David. Looks like okay. a lot of really good improvements. Yes, See, I think it'll help. Zach is excited in the comments. <laughs> Go so, Zach. All right, thanks, David. Um, and now to our last presentation from Anton, who has a QA update. Hi everyone, let me share my screen. Just give me a second. Uh, okay, here we go. All right. Um, All right, so I just, well, the release is drawing to a close. Uh, we almost there, we just cleaning up few issues. So I thought it would be a good time to tell you what happened in the past uh, three weeks. So this is two pizza pies from Q2, which is on the bottom and Q3 uh, bug fest, which is on the top. And uh, I thought we did pretty well last time. We did even better this time. So uh, percentage-wise, we um, we did better. We uh, passed. We had more test cases, and um, 
uh, we uh, well one we one more percent of uh, test cases passed this time than last time. Even though if you look at the absolute numbers, we have 63 failed test cases as of right now versus 49 last time, but we still very fine issues. So we may exceed that number as well. So overall uh, on, par, uh, on, on par or better than last time. So, um, that's pretty much the same numbers that I just uh, I just cover covered. Um, uh, we got more test cases and we um, we passed them all and we left um, uh, we left uh, fewer on the table. So we had twelve test cases before we didn't even touch. Now we have only three that we didn't touch. Uh, participation was uh, significantly higher by volunteers compared to. Q2, we had, on, uh, we had 60 people, which, I, uh, which was a record last time. And uh, this time we had 75 people. So you uh, could see them all. I know it's kind of small, but I had to fit them all here. So uh, 75 uh, librarians or uh, people that work in libraries around the world participated. Uh, in terms of balancing the uh, testing between staff, so between product owners and uh, community, we are holding the same numbers. So community tested more test cases, but it's still they tested 84% of the test cases and Folio staff tested uh, 185 uh, uh, test cases, which is more than last time but percentage wise, it's the same number. So we're keeping the same trend at the moment. In terms of participation of uh, institutions, we have four more uh, institutions that, um, that participated and some, um, some institutions are fading away like Chalmers because they already up and running but the institutions that are planning to go live soon are very active. So Cornell and five colleges, as you can see, are leading the way. And our German uh, volunteers are also very active. So you can see the green uh, color. This is all um, institutions from Germany. So they are uh, very active. Uh, uh, across all the Bugfest, and uh, this Bugfest is not an exception. So, in terms of bugs that were uh, that has been found by testers, um, we have read uh, with trending down. So, we used to have 137 uh, in uh, Bugfest uh, Q2 Bugfest, and now we have 100. So, we have good um, uh, chunk of uh, well, the nice downtrend compared to the previous uh, compared to the previous bug fest. Um, and 71 of those uh, 100 assigned to uh, assigned to the uh, current release and uh, they will be most of them will be fixed. I think we only have what six of them that are in flight now. Uh, total number of issues. So this is not only bug, uh, volunteers, but um, all the bugs that were found and uh, assigned to the um, to the uh, Q3 release uh, after module has been released. So this kind of total count of escape defects. Again, it's. Uh, it's a smaller number compared to the previous uh, release. So we have 245 versus uh, 314. So another good uh, trend, uh, uh, trend that is going down instead of up. So thanks to all your hard work and uh, process, um, uh, process improvements, uh, I think uh, extending time that uh, of the uh, release uh, 
and all, all your work to uh, to prevent bugs uh, is kind of paying off. So we're seeing a downtrend um, downtrend here, and uh, it's all I have. So we are very close to um, to call the release. We are in um, in the final uh, final week of basically have a punch list of defects that needs to be fixed. I think it's like less than 20 issues that we're waiting on. And hopefully on Friday, we'll, uh, we'll call it, um, uh, we'll call GA release uh, that, you know, will make it available. So uh, that's all I have. Uh, thanks for your time. And are there any questions? No question. Just wanted to say no thank question. you, Anton, for right. for organizing this, as always. Right. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, we did end a little bit early anyway. Um, I'm sure people appreciate having 10 minutes of their time back. So um, thanks, everybody, for all your presentations and comments and questions. And um, we will, um, Peter Murray will post the recording for this up on uh, YouTube as usual. So. You can share it or review it there as needed. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.